Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and today let's try to find the answer to the question. What makes the great GPS or rather to be more precise GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System Module, Receiver Module, you know the teeny tiny things you put on your drones to know where your drone actually is and what you have to do to get it back home. There are many different GNSS or GPS modules on the market you can get. And they really like differ in price, in size, in capabilities. And today I will tell you a few traits that you should be looking at when thinking about deciding which GNSS receiver module you should be going with. But today's video will be rather more on the technical aspect on the not I will today I will just not give you an answer which GPS GNSS module you should get. We will not be talking brands models at all. We will be only talking about things that affect the performance on the module and affects the usefulness on the module. Not the real recommendation in this video yet because I'm currently working on the experiment that will for example try to answer the question is it really worth to get more expensive mod GNSS module or just go with the cheapest scrap interesting right but without further ado, ado let's go to the list of the features or the traits of the different GNSS receivers that are important for the quality and the usefulness of the receivers, those receivers in the RC FPV hobby. Number one, the price. Yes, definitely the price because on the market, only on the market for the RC oriented GNSS receivers, you can buy as cheap as nine, ten dollars, sometimes even cheaper, or go as expensive, but not really the most expensive, of 50, and in some of the cases, even much more GNSS modules. And do remember, we are still talking about the GNSS modules only for the RC hobby, not some high end stuff you use in other applications. No, only the basic stuff. Yes. Probably the more expensive module will be, well, better. On the other hand, uh, if it's cheaper and it works, I don't know, maybe in the 95% as well as the most expensive GNSS module, then maybe it's really a good idea to buy the cheaper one. On the other hand, probably with the cheaper one, they had to cut something to go with the price as low. Maybe the quality of the build is worse. Maybe the components are worse. Maybe they never even bothered with the tuning on the antenna. Those definitely are the aspect you should be considering. From my experience, uh, when you are looking for something, first just scrap, scratch out the cheapest crap. Definitely not something worth looking at and then scratch the most expensive because probably they are very specialized and you do not really need them. What you really want is something in the middle, but that in the completely different video. Now let's go to the aspect number two. The aspect number two is the size and the weight, but not size and the weight of the whole GNSS receiver. Most specifically, the size and the and size and the weight on of the antenna, because in this case, with those ceramic antennas for the GNSS GPS receivers, there is a direct correlation between the tune quality, sensitivity and the reception pattern we will cover in the latest sections of those video and the size of the antenna. In general, the bigger the antenna, it will just allow you to get the better reception, to get more satellites, to get the signal faster and usually to have the tracking and the position estimation quality just better. Yes, Sometimes size doesn't matter. In this case, in general, the bigger is better. However, 
it's not that you can use only the biggest one. It all depends on what you expect on the GNSS module and if you will be using this only in the sunny day in the middle of the field or sometimes you might expect that okay there is uh, there are bad conditions in the ionosphere the signals might be affected and do I really want to fly over there or do I want to fly under the roof or something like that with the GPS assistance and then then yes rule of a thumb is that the bigger the antenna the better of course I do not tell you to get those those big antennas like for example in the uh, geology not the geology the you know the guys that are measuring the land I forget how this thing is called in English right now that, that size of the antennas because that makes absolutely no sense however please do remember that usually the bigger is better in this very specific case because thanks to that we can have the higher antenna sensitivity and better radiation pattern antenna sensitivity or to be more precise antenna sensitivity and antenna selectiveness are extremely important because thanks to higher sensitivity your GNSS receiver has the ability to track and to get the data from the satellites that are not directly above you they are somewhere else uh, or slightly obscured for example by the situation in the ionosphere etc 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 the higher sensitivity is better because with the higher sensitivity you will usually be able to get the fix faster and then also get the better position estimation the better horizontal dilution of precision but we will cover the horizontal dilution of precision slightly later so like I mentioned before, bigger antenna usually means that also it has the better sensitivity and usually also means that the bigger antenna is better tuned, more expensive antenna actually, is better tuned and has a better selectiveness. That means that the antenna on the GNSS receiver gets the data only on the frequencies it is supposed to be getting. There are better filters that tunes in better because it's a known fact that for example the HD cameras like to pollute the radio in the frequencies that are important of the GPS and then if this not exactly but close to if the antenna selectiveness is rather crappy and just it's picking everything around then there's a higher chance that the HD camera or something else like for example the Crossfire or a 9 can prohibit you from getting a good GPS fix the better the less selectiveness and the higher the sensitivity usually is better. Then it's the reception pattern. Very important stuff. Because it's relatively simple to have a high gain antenna with very narrow reception pattern. And in, in theory it's absolutely fantastic stuff. You have high gain antenna with a narrow reception pattern. But that means that your antenna can track usually only vertically above you. And what are the chances that the satellites you would like to get are only directly above you? Rather this is not what you want. We want a compromise between the sensitivity and the reception pattern. We want both of those values as high as possible. Of course, uh, the perfect situation would be radiation pattern that is at least 180 degrees in every direction. So you can get the signal from the satellites anywhere around you in the, in the sky, but that, that's rather unrealistic. What we, however, we do want to have is have a relatively equal sensitivity everywhere around you and unfortunately this is something super hard to get from the uh, PDFs from the specifications of the receivers but one more time we have to assume that the bigger the antenna then the better in this area area it actually is
And then it's the quality of the electronics. Yes, that's the quality of the electronics. It turned out that in the RC Hobby you are usually using the U-Blox uh, receivers. Generation 6, uh, which currently I never really can recommend anyone to getting U-Blox uh, Series 6 receivers because yeah, why? Series 7 that somehow were never very popular. Right now the most popular is the Series 8 eight of the Ublox uh, receiver modules and the series nine of the Ublox. And over here, yes, usually the higher the number, the better. Of course, with the higher the number of the generation of the receiver electronics, receiver chipset, you will have to probably have to pay slightly, slightly more. And with more, you usually will get faster acquisition, better quality, better filters, better position estimation, and so on, and so on, and so on. But if we take a look at the prices, you should notice that you can get a decent quality 8 series U blocks for 10, maybe 15 bucks. In some of the cases, closer maybe to 30 with the high quality stuff. But if you would like to get yourself a series 9 of the Ublox, you have to pay, well, at, at least 20, 30 bucks because the prices are starting above $40. So it's not always sometimes a good idea to get the 9 series of the Ublox when the 8 series of the Ublox usually works just fine. But bear in mind, there are indeed differences in the position estimation between uh, series 8 and 9. And no, the number of tracked satellites not always is the most important. And now the summary. If you listened carefully, you might have noticed that what I actually said in the last few minutes is that the bigger the antenna, the better. And rather buying always the smallest GNSS receiver might not be a best idea ever. Yes, if this is your conclusion from this video, then definitely you are correct. In this case, there is a price to pay the lower, the smaller with the size and the cheaper with the price you will go. Usually a slightly better module with slightly bigger antenna will give you better position estimation, faster acquisition time, more satellite tracking and lower horizontal and also vertical dilution of the precision. Not always. The smallest stuff, even if this is coming from the best possible uh, retailer of the man or the manufacturer, is actually the best option. Sometimes it just might be better to spend those few grams by getting a bigger module, heavier module, just that something that is your know, beefier with the better tune than the smaller one. And with that, I don't know, happy or not happy, pessimistic, optimistic thought, I think it's end this uh, video. You might feel, well, not fulfilled with the amount of the information I gave you because I really tried not to tell you what to buy. Why? Because, I, like I mentioned before, I'm working on the video when I will test a series of the GNSS receivers to answer the question, is really the smaller or the more expensive or the bigger really actually better? But this is a topic for a completely different day. That's all for today and until the next one. Bye-bye.